Good afternoon, all of you. The correct name is Abhay Chitnis. And uh, I'm the CTO of LNT Infotech, which is a $500 million IT services company based out of India. We have uh, our development centers across the globe, including one here at Singapore. Our cloud journey started two years back um, in a boardroom where uh, our CEO turns to me and says, hey, you know what, our capital expenditure is going through the roof. All the three, all the three categories we yes, explored, uh, it went through uh, the same three phases. So starting with uh, our IaaS journey, uh, like I said, we first start with defining what are our business drivers. We did this in three phases after defining the business drivers and reviewing them at each phase. We then formed the architecture principles that will drive that particular phase. Uh, we get viewpoints from various stakeholders, whether it's IT infrastructure department, whether it's a customer viewpoint or whether it's a developer's viewpoint. And then take certain architecture decisions. So phase one, what are the business drivers? As I said earlier, phase one started two years back and the business drivers were completely internal focused. So we started uh, in a very simplistic fashion. We formed uh, our first transition architecture, which is a very simple private cloud, which was based on a framework called uh, Eucalyptus, which some of you might have heard of. And so we moved on to phase two and we really looked at what our business drivers were at this point in time. And mind you, by this time, uh, there was a fair bit of maturity as well as knowledge regarding cloud computing that had percolated into our organizations and the demand was growing. So the business drivers that got added at this stage is number one, where earlier we were looking at putting our development and testing environment onto cloud. Now there was a need to also look at the production environment and really put that into the cloud. At a 80,000 feet, uh, you see it has three standard layers of any architecture, the presentation layer, the business layer and the source layer which we call as the service repository. However, each of these layers is further nuanced by adding sub layers and separation of concerns within that. So, uh, so what is CloudX? <laughs> the CloudX then uh, actually works across multiple hypervisors and we have more or less standardized on KVM for our development and test and VMware and Hyper-V for our production environment. So CloudX then is nothing but a combination of a private cloud completely internally, a virtual private cloud over a public cloud like Amazon and a virtual private cloud over a dedicated hosting service provider. What are the business drivers that stand today? And now there is a substantial change in terms of quality of business drivers that exist. So the business drivers here, and mind you when it comes to PaaS, the business here is IT as a business because typical users of PaaS are the IT developers whether they come from a IT services company or from an internal IT department. Now in order to meet these business drivers and overcome the challenges, we picked up on four different platforms. Uh, Google Apps uh, for uh, Java, Windows Azure for the Microsoft technologies and the old kid on the blog which is force.com and the new kid or the likely new kid on the blog which is vmforce.com and that takes us to the SaaS journey. Uh, so the SaaS journey, similar business drivers, typically I need to reduce uh, the investment in the existing IT assets in terms of maintenance, in terms of upgrades that we do on my legacy environments. Instead, why not in a typically commoditized way I, I actually consume what is available to me on the cloud. And we chose two aspects of SaaS, one is a package implementation and when I say package here, I'm talking in terms of a package like salesforce.com or an integration package like Boomi. And, and that takes us to what we see as the next wave of cloud computing which is what we call as a cloud mediation platform. And in order to, uh, to explain the cloud mediation platform, let me take a use case scenario. Say an uh, enterprise needs uh, a typically uh, an ERP system, a CRM system, uh, 
a Microsoft Office kind of a system. It needs email. It needs uh, a trouble ticketing systems. It also needs a certain infrastructure for uh, testing out new functions, for being able to deploy new functions, all of this. Now some of the functionality is available to the enterprise through its existing applications. So how does an enterprise go about servicing these needs both from existing as well as from vendors who are on the cloud? I mean, one thing is, yes, it can, it can get into arrangements with each of these vendors, have specific policies and procedures uh, to actually deal with them. But then think of the complexity from an end user perspective where he has to deal with each of the services in a completely different fashion. Instead, we see the emergence of a meta layer. We provide these services through a partnership with various technology vendors and through a series of frameworks, templates, skills, and the cookbooks, methodologies that have emerged. And right on that, I have finished my presentations and I will take the questions afterwards. Thank you.